should do if you want to play the booming North American energy renaissance, but you're worried about owning something that's dependent on the increasingly volatile price of oil, which have been getting slammed all month right up until today when it rebounded more than a dollar thanks to a bullish inventory number. How about buying a stock like Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP, a pipeline master limited partnership that supports a handsome 3% yield? The bulk of Magellan's business comes from transporting refined products like gasoline and diesel. They have 9,500 miles of refined product pipeline, the longest in the country, along with 54 terminals, 42 million barrels of storage. The company also has a marine storage business as well as 1,100 miles of crude oil pipelines. Even though transporting crude only accounts for 18% of Magellan's revenues right now, some 75% of the company's expansion spending is focused on oil projects, particularly in the red-hot Permian Basin. Now, Magellan's a kind of master limited partnership that mainly works like a toll road. Roughly 85% of its business is fee-based and dependent only on volume, not commodity prices. Plus, because we have a serious shortage of pipeline capacity in this country, the company has tremendous pricing power. Meanwhile, Magellan is one of the strongest balance sheets in the business, and the company has a long history of raising its distribution, something they've done for the last 48 consecutive quarters. This one is such a winner. Magellan plans on increasing its payout by 20% this year, raising another 15% next year. So the battle of 3% yield could get even larger, of course, without the stock going down. It would already be a lot higher, except that the stock has been on fire. 33% return year to date. Ideally, I'd wait for a pullback. Uh, this guy, stock's currently only about a point and a half from its all-time high. But it's been such a consistent, terrific performer, I don't know if you're going to get one. Let's take a closer look to, with this incredible stock with Mike Mears, the chairman, president, and CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners. Learn more about his company and his prospects. Mr. Mears, welcome to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. Thanks for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. Sir, you've been in this business for a long time. Did you think going, let's say, three, four years ago that yours would be one of the most powerful growth stocks in the country? Well, I don't know that we're uh, proud enough to say that we foresaw uh, just how successful we'd be, but we really did have a great opportunity with regards to the crude oil space. Uh, you know, we had an underutilized asset, uh, refined products pipeline into West Texas that really kind of jump-started us into the business. We uh, uh, explored putting that project, that line into crude oil about three years ago, uh, which we just started up last year out of the Permian Basin. And it's really been a, a winner for us. It's, it's fully committed, 275,000 barrel a day. It's called our Longhorn Pipeline. Uh, the growth in the Permian is continuing. Uh, that led to another project that we, that we started about a year and a half ago called BridgeTex Pipeline, which is a 50% uh, joint venture between Magellan and Occidental Petroleum. That's a 300,000 barrel a day pipeline out of the Permian. Between those two, we're going to have uh, about half of the uh, incremental takeaway capacity from the Permian to the Gulf Coast. So uh, we've really been in the sweet spot with regards to crude oil out of the Permian. But you also may be one of the biggest beneficiaries, if maybe the biggest beneficiary, if the Commerce Department really does get its way and we start, ex uh, we start, exploiting, uh, we, we start exporting uh, condensate. Because you've got splitters, you've got, you're, you're the company that could benefit the most by export. Absolutely. If you look at, uh, if you look at the greatest risk to uh, you know, increasing or continuing to increase in crude oil production in this country, it's lack of a market. You know, most of the production in this country is light, sweet crude oil. And you know, there's a limited market in this, in this country. Refining capacity in some cases was converted to heavy oil a few years ago. And so in order for us to continue to increase uh, the production in the forecast, in the Permian, in the Eagleford, in the Bakken, we need to have uh, the ability to export it. Our pipelines are perfectly positioned to do that. Uh, we have marine facilities in Houston and Corpus Christi that can also allow us to, uh, to export or put crude oil on the water uh, when that time comes. And it just creates more opportunities for our business. Once we have the infrastructure in place, we can add the storage, we can add the dock capacity, and we really can expand the business uh, with regards to uh, uh, transporting refined, pro I mean, crude oil offshore. But I also, you also mentioned the splitter. I mean, that's a project we announced earlier this year uh, in Corpus Christi. If you look at the condensate production forecast out of the Eagleford, uh, it's tremendous. Uh, you know, anywhere between 600,000 to a million barrels a day of new production of condensate out of the Eagleford. We have a pipeline called Double Eagle, which is a 50 50 joint venture with Kinder Morgan to transport condensate from the Eagleford to uh, Corpus Christi. And now we have a fee-based uh, condensate splitter. Again, it's fully committed. As you mentioned in the intro, it's 100% it's fee-based. We're not taking any commodity risk associated with the splitter. Uh, but it's perfectly positioned to take this new production, split it into the naphthas and the other uh, uh, end products 
that the market needs and then put some of it on the water if it needs to or stay here domestically to serve domestic demand. One last question, sir. There have been a lot of articles about how difficult it is to site pipelines. There's been some tough articles about trying to get natural gas to New England, even though we get them off of coal and oil. We know Keystone. There's some parts of the country that are receptive to building pipelines, aren't there? That's absolutely true. I mean, the, the opposition you run into with regards to new infrastructure is very site specific. Fortunately, in Texas, uh, and generally in the Southwest, in Oklahoma, where we're based, uh, the, the market's generally pipeline friendly. Uh, and so we've been successful in getting a lot of infrastructure built. Unfortunately, other parts of the country, uh, I think, irrationally have uh, concerns with regards to new infrastructure development. Pipelines are the safest way to move products in this country. Uh, they've shown that year over year the, the, the perf safety performance improvement of the industry has been dramatic over the past 10 years. But it, you know, th those facts don't get out in the marketplace that often because people are so focused on the opposition of, to, to infrastructure. But well, fortunately, where a lot of the production is taking place, we're not, we're not seeing that opposition. Well, uh, we're different on this show. We try to make people money, and we also know that safety in pipelines actually are very much in common versus the ways that other people seem to want to transport things, which you know are not that safe. Mr. Mike Mears, Chairman and President CEO of Magellan Partners, Magellan Midstream Partners, thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you. Because this is the great growth stock for this moment. They are when you hear about us exporting oil, they're the best player because they've got all this different infrastructure. They got the longest pipeline for a fine product. They got everything going for them. Stay with Kramer.